I'm going to start by including the x11 header file. Afterwards, I'll start my main function. My first call is going to be for the x open display function. Let's open the docs for this function for a sec. By the way, two main points on this video. First one is that the code here is not going to be for production. It's only for fun and learning purposes. So I'm going to skip a lot of error checking and stuff like that. Second one is you're going to need to get on your computer the development files for X11. I'm going to list everything in the description, everything you're going to need on your computer. And we can see that we need to pass in a single parameter. That's going to be the display name. But you can see that you can also pass in null, in which case it's just going to default to the value of the display environment variable. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And this will return a display. So I'm going to save this into display. Afterwards, second function we're going to use is called xcreate simple window. First parameter is going to be the display, afterwards the parent. For the second parameter of the parent, I'm going to use the default root window function. So I'm going to open it right now in the man page. And we have here a couple of functions. So I'm going to search for default root window. You can see that this returns a root window for the default screen. So this is exactly what we want for the second parameter here, for the parent. And this is how it's called. Pretty simple. Now let's go back to simple window. Afterwards, we pass an X and Y. X and Y of the window, and afterwards, width and height of the window. Afterwards, the border width. I'm just going to give it like one pixel. I don't know. And afterwards, the final two parameters are going to be the border and the background. And what you pass here are the actual pixels of each of those. And I just want a black border and the background to be white. So in that case, I'm actually going to use the black pixel function. First parameter is the display and second one is going to be the screen number. I'm just going to pass a zero here because this code is anyway not for production. So I'm just passing something hard coded. And this is for the border. Now for the for the background, I'm going to actually use a white pixel. That's called kind of similar. And that's it for the parameters of this function. So I'm just going to go back here and make sure that I know the return type, which is window. And now we can move on to the next function, which is xmap window. I'm going to open the docs for this. This function gets two parameters. First one is going to be the display, and the second one is going to be the window. You have to call this function to actually show the window. What this does is actually map the window on the screen. Afterwards, I'm going to call the function xselect, and then input. And here, I'm going to actually specify which kind of events I want my window to get. So I'm going to open the man page. First parameter is display. Second one is window. Final one is the event mask. Here we actually choose which events we're interested in. For this, I'm going to actually go for a sec to the online documentation of Xlib, which is the library of X11. And I have here the section that talks about the events. And the event I'm actually interested in is called the exposure event, specifically the expose event. That's what I'm interested in. So let's just go ahead and search for that in this document. I'm going to put the link for this document, of course, in the description. Now this is an interesting part because this helps me with the mask I want to actually pass to specify which events I'm interested in. That's the last parameter of the xSelect input function. And we can see that for the exposure event, we actually need to specify exposure mask. So I'm just going to go ahead and type this in my code. A little more information about the exposure event. I'm going to search for this here for a sec. I'm going to click here on expose events section. This section talks a little bit about the exposure events in general, but the reason I'm interested in those events 
is because sometimes the contents of my window can be obscured and I want my application to handle that case and still redraw the graphics once my window is again exposed. And so the expose event is actually really useful for this case. And I'm gonna actually draw in case I have an exposure event. By the way, the type of the event, as you can see here, is expose. I'm gonna use this later in the code. After calling select input, I'm ready for my event loop. I'm gonna start by making a loop here with four. First thing I'm gonna do is get the next event. So I'm gonna call x next event. First parameter is gonna be the display. Afterwards, a pointer to the structure of the event. I didn't define the structure yet, so I'm gonna define it real quick. After finishing this function, it's gonna fill this structure with information about the event. So I can go ahead and first of all, open the man page for X event. Now I'm interested in the type of the event. So I'm gonna check the type. Let's check if this type is indeed the expose event that I'm interested in, as I saw in the documentation right over here. If the event is an exposure event, I want to actually go ahead and draw a string on the screen. So for this, I'm going to open a function that is called draw string. Drawable is just the window, so I'm going to pass the window for this. GC, I need to pass the default GC for this. GC, I think it stands for graphics context or something like that. I have a function for this, default GC. Screen number, again, I'm going to use zero for this. Let's go back to X draw string. Afterwards, the X of the text, that's going to be, for example, 100. Also for the Y. Finally, the string itself. And the length of the string. Just going to hard code it. Now let's go ahead and compile this. I'm going to save it first. I'm going to compile this with GCC. And I'm going to pass in minus L with X11 with uh, capital X. That's the library that I need to use. Now if you go ahead and run it, you can see the window right over here. I can even move it around a little. Subscribe for more programming videos and thanks for watching.